Hi, I would like to welcome Simon here today on our platform, who's going to talk about um, being in a long term relationship with a narcissist and his experience of it and the effect that it had on him and different things he went through in the hope that it will resonate with someone who's either in this relationship at the moment or has gotten out of it. And if it resonates, it may help in some way validate your experience and just be of benefit in general. So, Simon, if I could ask you, first of all, just to give us a rundown as briefly as possible in your own words and time about your long term relationship with the narcissist and anything you want to add that you think may be of interest to our community. Okay, yeah. Thank, thanks, Paula. Um, what can I tell you? Th 33 years ago, I met a, uh, um, well, she met me actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she met me in town on, uh, on Carnival Day, all right, forget it. On Carnival Day, she came up to me and she said, you're Simon, aren't you? And I'm like, no girl, had ever, no girl had ever done that to me, ever, right? She said, you're Simon, aren't you? And I said, who are you? And, that, that, and I then found out that, I'm probably not being very brief here, but I then found out that she'd actually researched me a bit from other girls. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, that's 33 years ago. It was a shocking thing. It was a chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she wasn't from this country. She was from another country. Which I, I see a lot of that actually on videos and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. So then uh, we went out. Was it? Was it? We were going out for two, 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 three years, two years, and we fell out on occasions, and then got back together, and then fell out, and then got back together. And the last, the last, very last time we got back together, um, it was. She said to me, "Right, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to bother anymore, right, with you because we're not going anywhere." And I said, "Listen to this. This is ridiculous." I said, "What do you mean we're not going anywhere?" And she said, "Well, we're not getting married or anything, are we?" So I went, "Well, do you want to get married?" This was the proposal, and she went, "Well, yeah, I think it needs to be done, don't you?" This is a lot of fault on me here as well, really, isn't there? Where was I? And I went, yeah, okay. Anyway, that was taken off me, and the, the wedding was in the country that where she was from, and it was just, see, I didn't even go, I hadn't even been to visit her parents, and the wedding was just organised. And at what stage was the, what stage did you get married at in the relationship? After about three, two, two, two and a half years of going out together. Okay. So, and did you, you kind of felt under pressure to, to get married? Is that what you? Uh, or not? Yes, yes, yes. Did I resist in any way? No, no. But I, 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 I tell you what I do remember the wedding day. I was terrified. I couldn't stop shaking. Hmm. I could not stop shaking. And that's, that's not something I'd ever do. Be frightened of something like that. Uh, I couldn't stop shaking, and then the wedding night, yeah, and the honey, the honeymoon were just like they were the biggest red flags of all, right? But I didn't see them. Yeah. There was just nothing. The, the honeymoon and the wedding night. In fact, the honey, the, the wedding night was nothing, <laughs> nothing. The but we'd been going out for two and a half years, so I didn't think that that had to happen on the wedding night and the honeymoon we went for one night in her country we had three nights with the hotel three nights honeymoon driving around her country having a look and after the one the first night we were away she said she said i want to go back to the parents house because that's where the, the uh the people that had come to the wedding were staying over weekend. So we were away and they were still back at the, the town. Okay. Uh, so we did one night honeymoon instead of three and we went we went back to the action mm. to where the parents of my friends were waiting for us to come back yeah. so we could then go home. Okay. So that, that, that was like red flag. What? We're on a honeymoon and you want to go back to where mm. it's all going on. Mm. Um, Anyway, move on. 
<laughs> Move on. Uh, Did you? It's, think- such a, it's, such, it's such a long story, Paul. I don't don't know what bits to put in. And it's okay. I'll try and guide you through it. Um, did you feel something, anything changed after you got married or did you feel, was there any change or not? Within 10 seconds of the ring going on. This is interesting because I've heard this before about people who marry narcissists, that it changes nearly instantly. That they feel that they've kind of somehow caught you or, you know, somehow they're in a position of power. So it's interesting if you say that. Um, I think... I think- Listening to you and other guys, it's as soon as they as soon as they know they've got you, right? They they lose it with you. But it's it's just yeah, it's mm-hmm. and then and then and then cycles. I but you don't know what you don't know what you're living through. You have no education, do you? No. And and once once I once I was new. And I don't like the guy, right? But HG Judith says, once you know, you go. Yes, he does indeed. I'm not saying I like the guy, right? But and that's it. Once you know, get out. There ain't, there ain't nothing you can do. Yeah, I think he's nothing. dead right. He's dead right. It's it's just a case of when do you know or how do you know? Because people are in these relationships and they don't know about the narcissistic personality disorder. From you and people like you. This is this this is the, 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 who else is doing it? Nobody, nobody. Well, just just on that, Simon, how did you how did you find out? How did you come upon the knowledge yourself? What made you search it out, or what happened? Can I ask you? Well, I, I got discarded in two thousand and sixteen. Uh, vile, vile. But but you don't understand what's going on. I tell you, the best bit is I'll, I'll go back. The best, yeah. I'll go back in a second. The best bit is, once you're out, right? And you, you're never out. You know, you'll never be out properly. There's no way I can forget that. No way, mm-hmm. right? Can I heal? Yes, I'm two years down, and and sometimes, sometimes I'll get anxiety, and but I've learned this. Anxiety is just like a bit of arthritic hip. It goes away. It does. Right? You know what I mean? It's so I've, I've got arthritis. I've got back, I've got crap Achilles. I've paid all for my life, so I've ruined my body. My mm. Achilles are bad, but I know that oh my Achilles give me grief today, but it's gonna last six hours and go away. And I know that's the same with anxiety. That's very, very good way looking at it actually. It'll make you less anxious. <laughs> it's a well, good way. That, yeah, yeah. that probably helps, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh anyway, where I've lost my train of thought. Where were you were saying you that asked? you were saying that um you were two years out after a terrible discard and that you're doing well in general. That's right. Yeah. In two, 2016, she left me. Uh, the build up that to us amazing. She got me to sell a house. I have got a few houses. I'm a builder. I built up. I built it. It's gone. I built up a portfolio. It's totally gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she got me to sell a house and pay the mortgage off. Yeah. This is in 2016. Yeah. And, and, 2016, she cashed a pension in. She, she's a, she's got, she works for the government. She cashed a pension in early. <laughs> I had no idea. Took a lump sum and a pension. My daughter went to university. This all happened within a couple of months. My daughter went to university. The youngest daughter went to university and she left. So, and that took her two years to do that, to get me to sell a house, mm-hmm. which I, I didn't want to do, pay the mortgage off, our house that we were living in, daughter gets to go to university, cash the pension in, and then left. I came home one day and I, I cut, she left. I called her and she said, uh, All I got was, I don't want to speak to you for a long time. Uh, and I, I sat in the back garden, <laughs> like in bits, just, just yeah. in bits. Is that it? Is that is that it? You've left, and all I get is you don't want to talk to me for a long time. Um, Still didn't know anything. Still didn't know anything. If I'd seen one of your videos, anyway. So then she hoovered me, as I I didn't know what it was then, but I now know what it was. Then I got hoovered. um, Obviously, I didn't know she'd gone off with a guy, but she had. I've since found out she'd gone off. She'd rented a terraced house and. 
was living with this guy. We're not living with him, seeing him, because my daughter, went, when she came back from university, she'd go and stop yeah. there with her. Uh, but, uh, sorry to sorry. just interrupt you, Simon. How long after she discarded you? I know people are probably curious. Did she come back and Hoover and... And also, nothing had happened to give you any warning that she was leaving, had it? Uh, yeah, yeah. When I look back at it, it was just after my birthday. Oh, the other thing is my son just commissioned in Sandhurst as well. So those things went on. And then she went to university. Then we still went to university. Then she left. Were the things building up? Yes. Yeah. No sex. Right. I was always controlled with sex. Did I know I was being controlled with sex? No, I didn't know I was being controlled with sex. I just thought that's what women did. Okay. But it was pure control. Now I look back. Now you join the dots together. Yeah. Now you're out. You can start joining the dots together. Uh, was it used yeah. as a reward or something? Or an, was it uh, sex used as a reward? I, I, I can't say that. I can't say that if I did something good, I got sex. No, I don't think it. I don't think it was used as a reward. I, I, I think it was used used as he's getting really fed up now. Okay. We'll have we'll have sex. Uh, I, I don't recall that. I don't recall me doing buying a flowers and all getting sex or doing something in the garden. I don't recall. Yeah. Okay. But there are other kinds of rewards. Maybe I don't know. And there are okay. different ways of getting devalued. There are so many different ways of getting devalued. So many different and being triangulated. I've been triangulated with no people. It doesn't involve people. It involves my friend's car. My friend got a new company car. Yeah. And then and and she she went to see my friend and his wife and then got a lift back. Okay. With him. And she he's got a new company car and she comes into the house. She has no interest in cars. Yeah. None. None. And then telling me how fantastic and great his car was. All right. Now, that's not me having a normal head listening to that. That's me having a battered, devalued head for months yeah. listening to that. In other words, he's doing really well. And the kind of implication with triangulation is that the other person is better than you. But it's very yes. subtle. It's very subtle. Amazing. Absolutely mm. amazing. Trying the triangulation is amazing. I've got I've been triangulated with Christmas lights. I've been triangulated with flowers. Yeah. Yeah. That's not it's not something we often talk about, actually. The object triangulation. It's usually with, with another person, another love interest, but yeah, so devalued with objects. Interesting. But, yeah. Christmas lights. I put Christmas lights on the house once. I built the house. I built the house on my own. Three years it took me. And I, I said, they've got some great Christmas lights in town. Do you fancy going to look at them? I'm prepared to get letters out and put them all over the house. No, I'm not interested. Okay, but I just thought you might want to come because uh, you'd probably be better at picking colours for me and put, have some input. No input, nothing. But there was no input ever. Uh, so I spent the weekend putting Christmas lights up and and put them on for Christmas and uh, I left them up. Mm. I left the, the lights up and took all the transformers away and put them in the garage. And then like, eight months later, I've left, I've, I've left, I've walked out, I've left her. And that Christmas, the house is lit up. So she's gone into the garage. That must have taken her a bit of time because she wouldn't know that kind. Got into the garage, found all the transformers, plugged all the lights in mm. and whacked the lights on. The lights she had no interest in, interest in whatsoever. So, yeah, it's only you that would know that, like other people yes, would come to yeah. the house. But it's it's that's the awful part of it, that it's only you that knows the meaning of it, if you know what I mean. Yes, and that yeah, can... yeah. And you can't tell anybody that. You can't no. tell anybody, not even your best friend. Listen, she had wanted nothing to do with the lights. And look, she'd managed to find all the transformers. It must yeah. have taken her a couple of days to sort that. I know. And then, it, as you say, you can't tell your friends or they, they kind of say to you, oh, don't be ridiculous. You know, she just probably wanted to have the lights up. They don't get it because it's, it's hard to get because you're the recipient of 
all the little different things that they do. And then you know that they're doing it on purpose. But you can't talk too much about that kind of stuff because you do come across as being crazy yeah. yourself. It's it's awful torture. Um, I did so, have one laugh though. <laughs> did you? I did have one laugh. Yeah, brilliant. I, this is this is when I got triangulated with flowers. Right, okay. <laughs> same thing. I built a great, great big high garden wall. Nice. And instead, of, instead of on the top of the wall. I'm a bricklayer, right? So I built this beautiful, beautiful big garden wall, and uh, on the top of the wall, I said to, I said, I'm, I said to her, I'm not going to put a stone on top. I'm going to put uh, pots of flowers all the way along, right? And it must have been thirty meters long. Wow! No, it, no interest. Yeah, are you, <laughs> are you coming? Are you coming to the garden centre? Shall we get some flowers? Right, let's go and pick some flowers together. Uh, she came the first time to be fair we picked some flowers but then we needed a lot more and and then the other couple of three times i went uh on my own <laughs> buying flowers for the garden on your own did a lot of that uh anyway put the flowers up and they looked amazing it looked amazing and some of the people drive up the street and it just looked amazing it looked absolutely fantastic because i watered them every day and fed them once a week blah 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 anyway then when i left she tried to do the same thing she bought a load of flowers planted mm. them they, she had, she had no idea the work that went into keeping them alive yeah you know feeding and watering an hour every morning an hour every night and her, her flowers died <laughs> so that was my well, you have to they say that you have to love plants as well that, that if you speak badly to plants i know this is like probably a bit too way out there for people but you have to show them love as well for them to flourish. There's been tests done of it actually. Yeah. But um okay, so just in relation to the long term, so you said you left as well then. It you you actually left your ex as well at one stage. Can you talk about that at all or why you that, did that? that was that that's when she left me in 2016, came back in uh, six months later. Uh I left in uh, 2018 August. August 2018. Uh, simply is that uh, she was about to discard me again, but in a very different manner. She didn't move. She wasn't going to move out of the house this time. I converted uh, some stables into an annex building, a flat. So she decided she was going to move out of the house and move into the annex. Okay. Annex building. So she was going to live on the property. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, wasn't going to contribute to the running of the house or the bills or that. She was going to, the, the annex was on separate bills anyway. So she was going to live in the annex and that's what was going to happen. And then uh, then she went to Australia to see her sister for six weeks because she got, really got a six-week holiday in the summer. And she went to Australia to see her sister. And when she was in Australia, I found YouTube. And I had six weeks of YouTube. And, and uh, there it was. There it was. Yeah. yeah. Heart, heart-wrenching, gutting, ripped you apart. But when you know, you go. Yeah. And what resonated, you know, can you talk to us about your discovery when you did discover YouTube or what made you go to it and the eye-opening moments what would you say you found on YouTube that resonated with you in relation to what you'd been through? Well, it was one thing when she disappeared to Australia for six weeks. And it, this was basically, I know, I know, now I stand back, what she was doing is showing her new supply. Right, she, Her sister lives in Australia. So she just went, all she did is go to see her sister. Easy. Right. Get off, get on a plane, get off a plane. There's my sister. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> All she was doing, because I was looking at the Facebook post at the time, all she was doing, and I, you don't find any of this out till later when you yeah. join the dots together. All she was doing was showing her new supply. Well, showing a new supply that like she didn't give a crap about me. She'd gone off to Australia on her own, right? And do you know what I mean? I, I can't explain it anymore. It was all, a, it was all done for a reason a show basically yeah yeah to the new supply okay 
to the new supplier, which I didn't know about at the time, but I found about after. Okay. Right. So, so I watched that, looked at Facebook, not knowing what I'm looking at. Yeah. Not a clue. Not a clue what I'm looking at. Not a clue. And then I was talking to my sister um, after she'd been in Australia for a couple of weeks, and my sister said said two words to me. I didn't even know what they meant. She said passive and aggressive behavior. She said, mm-hmm. I find her, I see her, I see her, she's kind of passive and aggressive sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I said to my sister, what does that, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. So then I Googled it and then you follow YouTube. Yeah. Okay. So they were the words that sent you to YouTube looking. Yeah. And we all find out kind of in different ways and you know the penny drops and it's kind of gobsmacking you kind of go when you listen to things you go oh my god yeah your jaw drops your yeah. jaw your jaw drops when you point join the dots together yeah very very much so well what was the what would you say was the draw j- dropping moment for you like what can you remember what hit home first of all when you heard what like what behavior did you hear on YouTube that really was the same as what your ex partner used to do? What was the main thing? Was it the discard or was it something else? It was adultery. It was the, it was the adultery, and I spent thirty years. Now I'm not saying these were all physical, but emotional maybe. I don't know. Do you know what? I don't care. Right, yeah. but I spent thirty years not having a clue. But when you step out, right, and you look and you learn the stuff yeah. all the time, all the time, they tell on themselves. Yeah. They tell on, they actually tell on themselves. But you yeah. don't get it. <laughs> yeah, you don't get it at the time. And how did she tell on herself? Can you, can you come up with an example? Well, a, couple of exa- a couple of examples, right? I caught her out on one, right? Uh, but didn't know what I was catching out on. They tell themselves. Uh, one example is uh, keep mentioning another te- another man's name at work. Yeah. I I said, uh, and she said to me, "Oh, he's just made chief union rep." And I've re- I've seen this on a video somewhere. And I, I looked at her, and this is towards very towards the end when she knows I'm getting there. I'm not there, but she yeah. knows I'm getting there. And all of a sudden. I don't give a crap what you say. Instead of being like I used to be, I'm, I'm, she's losing control. Yes. I, did, I didn't know that at the time, yes. but she's losing control because I'm putting up with less and less of a bullshit since she left me in 2016. Simon, that's very interesting because the 2016 discard, you know when they discard you, the, the, like they call it the final discard um, it can be so earth shatteringly painful that like I think maybe you become a bit numb to them would you think that when she came back with you then that the feelings had changed for you when she came back of only this is stuff I've learned when she came back to me it, she wasn't the same I didn't know what I was looking at, okay. but she picked up his character traits. Interesting. I didn't know that at the time. She was talking about stuff she wouldn't talk about, like power walking. <laughs> what, do you know, where did you get this from? You know, yeah. And then, she, and then she bought herself a bike and dressed up all in lycra one day. Well, that wasn't her, like. That wasn't her. She doesn't. Uh, she would never dress up in white crap. Yeah. A, a very interesting thing I found is that when I left, this brilliant. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. Classy, but you don't know what you're looking at. Okay. When I, I left, and then my friend's wedding. I never went back ever. I've never. I've never spoken to her since. I've seen her once. Once, but I don't think she saw me. Ne- I left. Mm-hmm. No contact. Blow that bloody bridge up. And it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. But blow that, it up. Wow. After blow 30 years or more, that's. Paula, I got YouTube. 
I got YouTube, didn't I? Right? So I, I didn't do any of this on my own. No, none of it. Well, with help from YouTube, the knowledge is amazing. Yeah, it does give you the something, but the strength you must have had, Simon, to do that, you know, congratulations to you because that says a lot it'd, about it'd, you. It had been, been going on for 30 years, right? Sooner or later, even the most blind person will get there. And, and other things I think now, uh, I've got, we've got four kids. What was I going to do? Walk on them when they were five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Can you imagine what would have happened? So whilst I didn't know, and this is the only, I don't believe, I do believe in God. I don't believe in the church, but I do believe in God. And I think like this was sometimes, and I don't, I'm not spiritual or anything like that, but it seems like somebody was, you're there now and you're going to stay there, but you're going to learn so much from this boy, right? You know what I mean? When I let you go. And somebody opened my eyes one day. My sister, who told her to, but I don't know. And I'm going to learn so much. You know, I, I drove home from work today and I was really nervous about coming here. But, you know, when you feel in your heart that real joy. Yeah. For no reason. For just no reason. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I was with a person that, that never felt that, could never feel that. When you look back, I'd, I'd see, I'd, I'd watch you sitting on the settee or something, just doing something random. Mm. And now, when I when I think back to that person, like you could you could see they were they weren't happy. They weren't yeah. happy. They just they, they, they they're never going to be happy. Yeah. I know. It's like, um, well, Sam, I don't know about you, but I know that, um, you know, the people that love you, like, say, people in your family or your friends or whatever. That's another story. I've done the same with them. My mother the, and father, too, yeah. They're the same. The same, uh, they're not narcissistic. Since I've been to YouTube, since I've been to YouTube, yeah, I've cut mum yeah. and dad off. I've cut them off. And do I feel bad? No. Well, what I was going to say to you was, do you, this was something that really interested me in that after being with the narcissist, when you then have a conversation with someone who really loves you, it feels like you're within a different presence or something. Do, do you, did you find that like that the narcissist seems like very isolated, very, how can I describe it? You don't feel the warmth from them or something. It's like that they're a statue that you interact with but that you know your family member that loves you or whatever yeah yeah you feel like seen or you feel like there is an interaction going on did you find anything like that with yeah you're, you're married to a cyborg robot and and yeah th no there was never <laughs> holding hands no it didn't happen uh, um no no, 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 no. There's no closeness. They're not real closeness. Yeah. No, 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 no. But do you think, what do you think held you in a long-term relationship with her? Besides Look, your... investment. Sorry. 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 Four, four children. Yeah. An investment. I invested so much. It was all me. It was the, the, work, the work and the, the money was all me. Yeah. To build, 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 build. Buy a house, build another one, buy another house, build another one, build the family house to live in, build. It was all about go, go, yeah. go. Yeah. But that was, and I look at that now and I, I understand. <laughs> like, <laughs> first, one of the first things she ever said to me when I very first met her was like, obviously, she asked me what I did for a living. And I told her, I said I was a bricklayer. And she said, uh, that's putting one brick on top of another, isn't it? There's nothing to that. Oh, oh, oh! you got a little devaluation there. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was within 15 sentences of meeting her. Nice. And then I got another thing. Uh, she, I dropped her at the airport early on, two weeks after going out with her. Jesus, I don't know what I did this for. Should have bailed. <laughs> two weeks after, uh, 
two weeks after meeting her, I dropped at the airport and she was going back to see her parents to fly back to her country to see her parents. And then when she came back again, I went to pick her up. And we'd only been going out two weeks. And she said to me, uh, I said, how's your mum and dad? Because I've never been introduced to them. I've never spoken to them, obviously. And she went, yeah, they're fine. My, dad, my mum asked me uh, if I'd got a boyfriend. And I, I said, uh, oh, yeah, did you tell her? And she went, yes. So, and then she said, yeah, my mum asked me what I, you did for a living. So I said, I told her that you were a bricklayer. And I said, yeah, okay, what did your mum say? And she went, I can't say her name. Mm -hmm. Oh, Deirdre, it's not a name. Oh, Deirdre, I wouldn't go out with a bricklayer. I used to go out with doctors and dentists. Nice. And that was after two weeks. And she relayed that. She actually told you that. Yeah. Now, yes. whether, but I don't even know if her mother said it or not. Yeah, I know. But that's not a really nice thing to say to somebody. It's a horrible thing to say. It to is somebody. a horrible thing to say to somebody. But I, I adjusted <laughs> and moved on. And so, uh, yeah. I mean, there's there's got to be something wrong with me as well, really, isn't there? No. What I'd say to you, Simon, is you you did say that you thought that your parents were quite narcissistic. And my, if, my dad, my dad is, but I'm not. I, your dad. I'm not. I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist, am I? No. But from what I know, from what I know is, and do you know what? I'll tell you about counselling. The counselling I've come across is garbage because nobody knows anything about it. Um, my dad's a narcissist, and my mum's the greatest enabler. Okay. Well, in, this is what I think now. See what you think about this. And I've, I've, not just me, but um, if we are brought up with a narcissistic parent or in a, you know, someone that has a kind of narcissistic style, we tend to be groomed to think that's normal. So we have a higher level of abuse acceptance, basically. It feels like home to us. You know, your, your ex-partner, when you first met her, if you had been devalued at home or if you saw a devaluation going on with siblings or anything, you kind of normalize that. So a person who wouldn't have had that upbringing, who, you know, would kind of look aghast at somebody saying that because they wouldn't be used to the put downs. But if we have experienced narcissism in our early childhood, it becomes normal to us. So we don't see the red flags because it's normal. You know what yes. I mean? Chaos, drama, it's normal. It was normal. normal. Yeah. So like yeah. If, so, if someone hadn't experienced that, if they'd had a healthy parent, they would have done what we're doing now, which is good that we're doing it now because we realised that that was a very off thing to say. So if you'd been sitting in the car now with somebody you were dating and they came and said, hi, Simon, what do you do for a living? And, oh, well, I've told my family but they said, I really shouldn't be with you. I should be with a doctor or a dentist. You'd kind of go, there's the door, mate, off you go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't think we'd put up with it as much nowadays, would we? You know? No, not in the slightest. No, never in a million years. No. Not now, not two years down the line. No. <clears throat> so I hope that's our protection going forward, that we kind of have a better opinion of ourselves and expect more for ourselves. Um, and I, I guess you can kind of see how we fell into narcissistic relationships, some of us. Yeah, easily, easily. But it's it's the expectations. Yeah, it's they dumb down your expectations. They, they yes. dumb them. They dumb them down slowly, slowly, slowly till yeah. you expect nothing. And like, and they're they're in their heads. No, they're playing the game and they've got the rule book and you don't even know you're in a game. I know, that's the worst. You don't know you're in a game. No. No. And, and they do it instinctively. I mean, I don't think a lot, some, some of it's planned, but most of it is just instinct, I think, because maybe it's worked before for them or they see that it, it works on you and they... That's, well, that's, just... that's, not, that's not an instinct, though, is it? I, I believe half of it. I don't know. Some of it is instinctive, but some of it is very planned. I mean, it took it took her two years to get me to sell a house, pay the mortgage off, which was the last thing I wanted to do. 
And then she cashed a pension in, Dort went to university, she left. That's two years planning. That's planning. Isn't it? Yeah, that's planning. No, I'm more talking about the kind of the everyday stuff that they kind of push you around with and lower your expectations on. That's definitely cold calculated planning. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But a lot, it's a defense mechanism, isn't it? What they have is a defense mechanism. And a lot, a lot of that, they will react. I've only ever seen that in 30 years angry three times. Really? I mean, I mean, rage, the rage we talk about. Yeah. Three times the rage. That's not a lot. This, of this, 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 no, this woman was passive, aggressive. Yeah, okay, okay. Unbelievably so. Unbelievably okay. so. So silent uh, treatments. Oh wow. Okay, so a high degree of control by control without losing us. Yeah. And and, and constantly, const constantly. And in very clever times as well, at parties, daughters' parties, and that. Twenty uh, first, but yeah, jab, jabbing at you behind the scenes, and then and then she bounces back into the party, great smile on her face, and I've got my, the, I'm, I'm dragging the backs of my knuckles on the floor. So, so covert. A lot of how, how they, and how the, incredible how they start arguments and let it's incredible how they start arguments and leave you with your head blown up and they turn on this smile and just walk in unbelievable unbelievable throw a bomb into a room and see how it goes off yeah unbelievable how they can and and my sister's wedding. Yeah, how, how they can they play you and, and they yeah they could get your emotions out of you. Yeah, for sure. Can can you just talk, Simon, just for a few more minutes about the silent treatments and what what were they like? This this will help people, I'd say, to understand them. The walking on eggshells thing, isn't it? It's it's insidious. I didn't use that. I played a lot of rugby, and I'd said to her on a few occasions, right? What we what we the term we'd use, right, in rugby was we'd be on the back foot. You're defending yourself. Yeah, I've heard right? that. Right, yeah. you're being attacked, attacked, attacked. I'm, right, I'm on, and I used to say I'm, towards the end, I'd say to her, look, I constantly feel like I'm on the back foot here, right, and. That, that and you try and talk about it, but never nothing ever gets resolved, and then the word salad comes out, and you give up. You stop. You just give up. After three minutes of listening to that, you give up. You give up, yeah. and you go away and get on silent treatment. The silent treatment treatments are a, a constant thing. Yeah, the silent treatment is that's their problem. What you've done is hurt them. Well, half the time you haven't even hurt them. They think you've hurt them. Yeah. Criticism. I mean, so would you don't criticism? It's not an evil word, is it? If you, you see somebody cutting a knife with the wrong side, and you say to them, "Turn the knife over," the blades on the other. That's not criticism, is it? Well, it could be looked on. I suppose for a narcissist may may see it as criticism. Other people may see it as helpful. Or funny, or whatever. Um, yeah, they have no sense of humour. No real sense of humour. Simon, can I ask you? Um, at this stage, you're at the two-year stage, which is probably a, a good stage in relation to the pain. I know everyone goes through different time scales, but um, do you see yourself? finding the love the love you deserve now or can you imagine yourself having another relationship yeah yeah oh yeah 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 uh just oh, it's yes 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 um, do i feel normal again yeah uh, it's it's hard right because if you do three years five years two years seven years you, when you get rid of them eventually, you go back 
to being who you were before. That's what I kind of think. But 30 years is a long stitch. Who was I? I don't yeah. actually remember who I was before. Because uh, I've done a, a proper <laughs> sentence, you know what I mean? But yeah. but you do go back to who you were before. Yeah. You, who, you, you do. And okay, yourself. so I'm going back to one. I was 23. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Myself, right? So we got a 23 year old now here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your dreams. <laughs> yeah. So you do go back to being who you were, and who you were never goes away. Right. But I, when I first heard that, you'll go back to being who you were, I used to think, well, I don't know who I was. And this is in the early stages when you kicked about, right, yeah. when you're first gone. I don't know who I was, but you do go back to being who you were. Yeah. Come on, how long? eventually i know yeah yeah uh, two years am i over it no yeah no i know do do i do i feel the same as i did when i first left or the first six weeks no no way i'm way gone past that because that was horrible i'm yeah. way past that like i say uh, anxiety that kicks in now and again i mean i'm still going through a divorce right which is dragging on um yeah. Like tonight, just before I came on here, I signed on to my emails, and there's a, a, an email off my, my divorce lawyer for me. Right? Yeah. Anxiety straight down. Yeah. Ah, it's a horrible ah. process. But that that will go away eventually. Yes. It'll be another stage done and well, dusted. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll get to tick the box, and I'll never get another uh, email off a solicitor. Yeah. So yeah, you do get dragged back. You do get dragged back even after two years, but then I did quite, yeah, I did quite a long time. A long time. That was a long, a long innings, as we say here. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, listen, I'm going to kind of wrap it up there because the, the certain kind of duration on, on the videos, um, what you've said and what you've shared, I really think will help people and it will resonate with them because, you know, if, if you've been with a narcissist, say, for two years, people often wonder that they may have regrets, like if the narcissist discards them. And they often wonder, could I have managed to stay with the narcissist if I'd learned how to cope with them? You know, when you're still in that kind of th phase that you think you actually love them. And I think it's really good to hear somebody's experience of what it might have been like to stay with someone like that to stop them Paula you get I watched I watched this person getting worse and worse and worse and worse over the last 10 years and I did I know what was happening no I haven't got a clue now I come out here and I look back in hmm. they get they do get worse with age that attention, the needing of the attempt, it's like it's right, you hit it, it's like a heroin addict. Okay. They need that attention. Unbelievable. And you think it get, gets worse with age then as well? Uh, from, from what I witnessed, yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, 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 I know other things, obviously, since the two years I've been down, I've found out other things. Um, obviously, uh, when you go through a divorce, you get, you um, you get the other person's bank statements. Incredible. Yep. Incredible. Incredible. Simon, I really want to thank you. This has been very interesting, but it's also, there's a lot of emotion there as well that people will relate to. Um, I wish you so well on your journey. I just admire you so much for having gone through the, the, the length of time you've gone through and to come out and, to be smiling at this stage. I know you're still going through it because I know I would be as well and I'm nearly two years out. So, and I had a shorter relationship than you. So I can only imagine the progress that you've made to get to where you are. I've, I've, I have some great help. Like I say, I played rugby all my life. I have, I've got eight, eight guys at the rugby club who were a strong, in fact, it, it, was, it was him before my sister I won't mention his name, but he said to me, uh, he knew that myself and my wife were going through it. But, and he, he said to me, he said to me, what's going on? And I said to him, I don't know what she wants. And he said to me, what do you want? 
And then I spoke to my sister and she said, passive aggressive. And then there you go. What do you want? My, what did I want? That didn't matter. No, but that was a fantastic question to ask you because we do tend to forget about ourselves and it's all about the narcissist and, you know, all about them. What do you want? That's what we really need to ask ourselves. Yeah. And and to get to the place where where we don't let somebody sit down and get into the car and tell us disparaging things about what we do, and what we work at and who we are and try and put us down like that. I think we it's a huge lesson anyway. And I hope that we all can manage now to have good relationships and, and literally find the love we deserve because we've really been through hell and back. But it does make us better people in the end, really. I agree with you, yeah. In, in fact, in some ways, you know, not to say this wrong, but having been through it, I mean, maybe if we hadn't gone through it, we would have had a kind of mediocre relationship with someone and never actually woken up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And whilst I'm not spiritual, I do believe in God. And you know, I, I, yeah, it's, it's, it, we, this was probably meant to be. Yeah. It's a good way. And who, who knows where you're going from here? Who knows where I'm going from here? We don't know where we will be in yeah. five years time. You don't know how big we'll be in five years time. I know that's the exciting bit when you can get over the pain, when you can get over that pain and you can kind of begin to see a glimmer of light. And, you know, when you get that first little bit of excitement, I think you must have got it because you have joy in you. Yeah. And you yeah. kind of you kind of go, really? And I mean, it might only really last for half an hour and it goes, but it's kind yeah. of it gives you a glimmer of how things might be. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. Yes, it does. It does. It does. So. um. And there you go, England beat France in the rugby as well. I yeah, we needed to, though, didn't we? We really <laughs> needed to. <laughs> I don't, I don't follow it too much, but uh, it's good fun. It's good fun. It's a good game to watch. Okay, well, listen. Um, it was really nice talking to you, and I'll be in touch via email after this. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for your contribution and your bravery. And I hope it feels good having done it as well, because it was it a does. scary thing to do. It does. It does. I was, uh, yeah, I was worried, but I'm not now. Thanks for all the okay, fantastic. Cool. Right. It'll take okay. me. It'll take me ages to end this meeting, so I'll be flustering around here. But we'll say goodbye for now, and I'll I'll be in touch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Br you're brilliant. Thank you. Thanks a million. Thanks, See you later. Simon. Night. See night. You all.